Hello class, in today's video we're going to be looking at the last topic related to box plots which is about parallel box plots. The learning intention of today's video is we're going to be able to compare data sets using parallel box plots and hopefully by the end of today's video you can compare and describe the differences in the shape, spread and center for parallel box plots. So what is a parallel box plot? Well, a parallel box plot is pretty much when you have multiple box plots that are illustrated side by side. And as you can see over here, when you've got parallel box plots, they are displayed using the same number line with the exact same scale as well. Now, as you can see on the left hand side and the right hand side, these parallel box plots can be illustrated in a number of ways. They can be drawn vertically as shown over here, or they can be represented um, horizontally as well. In addition, when multiple box plots are represented, each box plot should be labeled. So um, as you can see for both of these examples over here, each of their respective box plots don't actually have a label. So for instance, if this was about like, let's say test scores, okay, so all the X axis should always have a label on it. But in addition to that, each of these box plots should have like a little title next to them. So for instance, this could be for class A, which is like, let's say C team and class B, which is therefore T team in this case of here. So make sure that when you are asked to draw um, parallel box plots, that you do need to draw these um, box plots and include the label next to them as well. Now, the reason why we actually draw um, parallel box plots or why we actually study it is because it's very useful to actually compare several data sets. So for instance, on my left hand side over here, I've got the box plot um, for a particular city or a state in China, pronounced Anhui or something like that. Um, and it shows you the number of um, cases uh, where people have actually recovered from the COVID-19 um, pandemic. However, that's just one single um, box plot, so this is not considered to be a parallel box plot. However, when I do actually um, draw and represent the box plots for the different states or different cities um, within China, then this actually allows us to make um, some interpretations and analyses. So for instance, over here, I've got the box plots of the other cities. So I've got for Beijing and the other one, which I can't pronounce at all. And by having them side by side, this it's really easy for us to readily see the, sim the similarities as well as the differences between these two data sets over here. I mean, between these three data sets. So what we're going to be looking at now is how do we actually interpret um, and make comments when we're comparing parallel box plots. Now, most of the questions that you are going to be asked when you have parallel box plots will actually ask you to compare parallel box plots by getting you to describe in terms of the shape, center and spread as well as outliers as well. Now, generally, the question might not ask you um, specifically in terms of the shape center and spread as well as outliers but this is something that's kind of implied so you must always be doing this whenever you have a question that asks you to um, describe the differences or describe the distributions for um, the parallel box plots so when we do this i've got an acronym over here so in, an easier way to remember this is the um, the word socks so SOX stands for shape outliers center and spread and you must be addressing each of these four points when you're asked to make a conclusion or make a description between these um, box plots over here. So over here again on this particular slide, this is just pretty much saying the exact same thing. So um, you need to include the median value, which is the center, the shape of the distribution, the spread, which is the IQR and range, as well as the outliers, but also provide the context of the question. So if the question is talking about test scores, make sure you are including the word test scores in your description as well. Whenever you're actually making comparison, you never ever um, talk about the five-figure summary. So for instance, you don't say, um, well, the minimum of this box plot is greater than the minimum of this box plot. That's a very superficial level of um, comparison. Um, what we do instead is, as I said before, we just compare the spread, the shape, the center, as well as the outliers. Um, but the median, of course, is going to be the exception because the center is a measure of the median in this case over here. Uh, when we're describing the differences between parallel box plots, it's really good for us to actually incorporate some of the language that's necessary to actually do this. So when there are similarities, these are some of the words that you may use. I'm not saying that you have to use this, but these are just the, the, some of the suggestions that I can offer. I actually personally don't use many of these words over here, but they, uh, I'm just listing you some other alternatives as well. And on the right-hand side, these are the words that signal differences. So if they've got different shapes or different 
um, centers or different spreads, then this is the words that you might want to use to indicate that over here. What we're going to be looking at now is how do we comment on the shape of a box plot? As I said earlier on, we always um, compare the shape, center, spread, and outliers. So before we do that, I just want to talk to you guys, what do I mean by this shape of a box plot? So there are three main types of shapes that are associated with a box plot. This is going to be either positively skewed, it could either be symmetric, or it could be negatively skewed. And there are some ways that will help us to determine the shape of a box plot. And there's actually different definitions if you look at different sources on the internet. So I've got some um, definitions over here. So for the very first one, for positively skewed, we can tell whether something's positively skewed if the length of the upper tail is greater, meaning it's larger or it's longer than the lower tail. Now, what the hell do I mean by these and lower tails or upper tails? The lower tails and the upper tails are essentially the whiskers in this case. So in this case of here, this is the whisker. This is also the whisker. The lower whisker or the lower tail is going to be this one over here. So this is the lower tail. And this over here is the upper tail. Okay, so just remember the two whiskers is going to be the lower tail and the upper tail. And one of the ways that we can tell whether something is positively skewed if this tail over here is longer than this tail. Now notice for this particular example, they're both the same length, so how the hell is this positively skewed? Remember, as I said, there's multiple definitions that um, are under this particular category of here, so there's another way for us to tell whether something is positively skewed, and that's given by this statement over here. So if you don't understand what this means, Q3 take away Q2 is larger than Q2 minus Q1, this is pretty much saying if the difference between this is larger than dif difference over here, then this indicates that this is going to be positively skewed. So that's the reason why this one over here is positively skewed because the difference between here and here is greater than this distance over here. Symmetric is pretty easy to tell. So, the, um, so when something is symmetric, what that means is generally speaking, the tails or the whiskers are the exact same length, but also the median is found towards the center of the rectangle or the box in this case as well. So that's a way of us identifying whether something's going to be symmetric or not. Lastly, the other shape that I want to talk about is negatively skewed. And it's pretty much the opposite of positively skewed. Where something is negatively skewed, the lower tail is usually going to be longer. But in this case, it's the same length. So, um, But also another reason why this example over here is considered to be negatively skewed is because the difference between um, Q1 and Q2 is larger than the difference between Q3 and Q2 in this case. So that's the reason why this is negatively skewed. Alright guys, so give yourself about a minute or so. I said five minutes, but this shouldn't take you five minutes at all. Please write in full sentences where you need to comment on the shape for the height of boys and girls. And remember, when you're answering these kinds of questions, it needs to be full sentences and try to include the context of the question as well. The context in this case over here is related to the height of boys and girls. So make sure you're including this in your answer. So please pause this video right now and answer the questions on the right hand side of the screen. Now, if you've answered this successfully, what you should have got is the distribution for the height of boys and girls are both going to be negatively skewed. So what this word over here means is that's just a fancy word of saying the box plot in this case. So the box plot for the height of boys and girls, so to see how I'm including the context, are both. So in this case, because they're similar, I'm using the word both negatively skewed. And that's the shape of this because the length of the lower tail, as you can see over here, is longer than the length of the upper tail for both cases. Now, sometimes in certain scenarios, it can be quite ambiguous for us to actually identify the shape of the box plot. So this is why I personally don't like this because it can be quite subjective. As I said, there are multiple definitions that fit under positively skewed as well as negatively skewed. So sometimes we need to consider the different definitions and select the best answer amongst them. So what do I mean by this? If you look at the um, box plot down below, notice that this lower um, lower tail over here is longer than this. So you might say because the lower tail is longer, this might be negatively skewed. 
However, if you look more closely, notice that the difference between the Q3 and Q2 is larger than the difference between Q2 and Q1. So you might think, well, hold, hold on, isn't that positively skewed? So this is what I mean by it can be ambiguous because notice that in this case, it fits under both definitions. And now it's up to you to decide which one is the best amongst them. And in this case here, you just have to make the um, a great decision. So in this case, I'd say that because the difference between the minimum score and the median, remember from the minimum to the median, that's 50% of the data set. That is a lot longer in this case, the distance between the minimum and the 50% quartile um, is longer over here. Therefore, it's going to be considered to be negatively skewed. So that's how I would justify it in this case. So I would say this is negatively skewed in this case. But generally speaking, you're not going to see these examples at all where it is quite ambiguous, but I'm just showing you that you may come across it though. The next thing I want to talk about is commenting on the center of a box plot. Now, previously I said that there are three ways to measure the center or the average. It's, this can be done by the mean, the median, or a mode. However, since we're studying about box plots, we only know the median. We can't really work out what the mean and mode is. So we don't have to worry about these guys over here. All you need to do is state the median value. So give me the number associated with it but also use words such as smaller or larger. So these are just examples because you need to describe the differences between the medians between both of these box plots. So for instance, if we were to look at the example down below, this is the median for the first class and this is the median for the second class. The way that I would answer this question is shown over here. I would say the median test score, so in this case, I'm talking about the center, but I'm also including the context, okay? So this is about test scores over here from a class um, in period one was 80%. So over here, it doesn't give us the, the label along the X axis, but because this is a test, I can assume that the unit in this case is percentage. So 100 being the highest number. So it was 80%, which is lower than the median score of the class who sat the test during the second period. And notice in both of these examples over here, I provided the, the numbers, the median for both of these box plots, but I also use words such as lower or smaller than um, just to indicate that I'm actually describing the differences between these two sets of data. All right, guys, um, so I've got a example over here. I'd like you to give yourself about five minutes to try to answer this question. Try to be as elaborate as possible where you're comparing the median between Carmelo Anthony as well as Dwayne Wade. So these are two basketball players over here. Um, and notice that you've got the box plot as well as like the dot plot next one. Just ignore the dot plots over here. Just look at the box plot and um, just compare alone the median values. So remember, include the number, but also use words such as smaller, larger than to describe the differences between the median values. So pause the video right now and answer the question on the right hand side of the screen. Now, if you've done this correctly, the way that you should be answering this question, it should be very similar to mine. Because in this case, this is um, talking about data set in 2012, I've also included that as well. So in 2012, I've said, Kamala Anthony was the leading scorer with a median average score. So make sure you're using these words over here, median. And in this case, I'm including the context. So the units in this case is talking about the point scored per game is approximately equal to 29. So over here, you can see that um, it's a bit hard for us to indicate or what is the median value because it lies over here. So that's why it's really good to use words such as approximately when you can't really, when you're not really too sure what it is equal to 19, which is greater than, so make sure you're using a descriptive word to make these um, comparisons, then the median points scored by Dwayne Wade, in this case, is approximately equal to 20 points per game. So make sure you're providing numerical values for both of these two data sets when you're comparing. All right, what we're going to be doing next is commenting on the spread of a box plot, and as you're um, already been taught um, or know from previous lessons, the spread refers to how scattered or varied the values are in the data set. So there are three ways to actually measure the spread. There's the range, the is the IQR, and there's a standard deviation. But as you all know, um, you can only determine the range and IQR from the box plot. You can't really determine the standard deviation. So ignore this part over here. We're gonna be looking at this in the next lesson though. So when you're commenting on the spread of a box plot, you always need to state the range and IQR, meaning give me the number for both the range as well as the IQR, 
but also you need to use words such as wider, meaning it's um, it's got a long range. Consistent means it's the range is very small, very narrow. So because the scores are more closer to each other, it's more consistent. Or you could use a word such as varied, which means another word for wider in this case, to describe the range for both the IQR as well as the range. Um, so again, using the exact same example before, using the test scores for both period one and period two, if I was to um, comment on the spread of this, you can easily tell that the range in this case for um, period one is a lot greater. So the way I'd answer this, the test scores in period one, so providing context, were more varied, okay, uh, because it's got a longer range compared to the scores in period two, because it has a range of 36% and an IQR of 25%. In contrast, so this is different now, the range and IQR for test scores in period two were respectively 25% and 12%. Now, the reason why I included the word respectively is because since I've talked about the range first and then the IQR, this the word respectively would indicate this first value belongs to the range and this um, second value here belongs to the IQR. That's why I've used the word respectively. So I encourage you to actually use the language that I have used in these examples in your own responses. All right, use the exact same example. Give yourself five minutes to answer this question. So now you're making um, comparisons in terms of the spread. So make sure you are talking about both the range as well as the IQR in your responses and also include the context. So please pause this video right now. If you've done this successfully, your answer should be very similar to my one over here. So I said, the points scored per game by Kamala Anthony was inconsistent. The reason why I say it's inconsistent because it's got a very long range or more varied. So there are two ways to explain this with a range of 44 and an IQR of 12. In contrast, okay, the points scored per game by Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade was uh, more consistent with a range of 31 and an IQR of 9. So these values are smaller compared to Kamala Anthony. The last thing I want to talk about today is commenting on outliers of a box plot. And this is probably going to be the most easiest one. So all you need to do is um, you need to state what the outliers are for that particular um, box plot uh, and which box plot actually has them. So if they have the label over here, then you could say, that, for instance, female has box plots, etc., etc. But also try to, if you can, describe how the presence of an outlier affects the range you know that outliers don't necessarily should belong in the um, data set because they may occur to chance or it's a fluke, it's a miracle. Um, so in this case, by having those outliers, this would pretty much increase the range. So that's all you really need to say for that. But also you need to state which box plot does not contain the outliers. So in the first example over here, if you're looking at this parallel box plot, in both of the examples, they don't have a circle or cross. So therefore, this they're both don't have any outliers. So the key word over here is the word both because you're making that comparison. Um, and for the second one over here, we can see that only the box plot the, um, representing males for the resting pulse rate have outliers. So the way that I'd answer this is, uh, firstly, there are no outliers in the resting pulse rate for females. So including the context, which is given over here. And I've also indicated which box plot as well. And then I said, however, there were males that had significantly abnormal resting pulse rate, which therefore means the outliers, equal to 40 and 121 beats per minute. These values are considered to be outliers, thus resulting in a significantly large range compared to the distribution observed in females. The last sentence is probably not necessary, and it's probably longer than it should be. But uh, as I said, I'm just stating how does an outlier affect the range of a data set. Um, now, a common mistake that students often make with this particular question of here, in, in this example, um, is that they often say there are two outliers in the data set, and that is super wrong. I would mark you so harshly if you actually said that, because a box plot doesn't tell you how many data points are in the data set, okay? It only just shows you the five-figure sum. It doesn't tell you there are 20 values in the data set. It doesn't tell you whether there are 50 points. So in this case, because you've got Although there are two points over here, this doesn't mean there are two outliers because technically there could be five outliers with a value of 120, but we don't draw five circles to indicate there are five outliers. We just represent that as one single dot, indicating that these are the outliers if they have a value equal to 120. So please do not say there are two outliers in the rest and pulse rates. You will be automatically incorrect. So please um, make this note inside your exercise book. 
All right, guys. So um, this is not for you to actually um, answer at all, but I'm just going to show you what would it look like if I was to describe everything for both the shape, center, spread, and outline. So how would this response look like? And I can confirm this is usually a four mark question, three to four mark question. So um, you've got about, let's say, 180 seconds to 240 seconds. So it's going to be a rather long response. This is what it will look like. The first point is I'm answering this in dot points. Um, I'm going to be talking about the shape. So in this case, the shape for both Kamala, Anthony, and Dwayne Raid, they're relatively symmetrical in this case of here. So in this case, you need to use this word, the shape, include the context. I'm talking about Kamala, Anthony, and Dwayne Raid in 2012. And I've given, the, I've stated the shape. They're both going to be symmetrical. The next part, I've talked about the center, which is um, pretty much what we've covered in the, um, in the previous example. This one, which we've already also covered um, in the other example. Um, and also to include um, about the outliers in this case, I've said, despite having a lot of inconsistencies in Kamala Anthony's performance, he doesn't um, have any outliers or he doesn't have any abnormal performances. However, there is an outlier in Dwayne Wade's performance because he did score over here, as you can see, um, 39 points, which effectively increased the range in his performance, okay? All right, guys, um, so give yourself five minutes to answer this question over here on the right-hand side. So the parallel box plots below compared the distribution of life expectancy on average for 183 countries uh, for the years 1973 and 1953. 53. Compare the parallel box plots by comp commenting on the distributions in terms of the shape, center, spread, as well as outliers. Um, if So in this case over here, remember life expectancy is just on average how long do people usually live in those um, different times for all 183 countries. So give yourself five minutes, pause this video, and then compare your answers with mine. If you did this, what you should get is something very similar to mine over here. So I talked about the shape in 1953. I said this is relatively symmetrical, but um, there's a negatively skewed shape in 1973. The reason why it's negative is because this distance is larger than this distance over here. Um, I've also talked about the median value. So I've included the numerical justification. Um, I've said that there are no outliers for both of these. And I've also said that um, I've also compared the range. So I've talked about having um, life expectancy being more consistent um, in 1973 because it's got a smaller range and a smaller IQR. And I've provided the numerical justification as well. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to answer these questions over here. So please pause this video to answer these questions. Um, you're probably wondering where these questions are found in. Well, questions three and questions five are obtained in exercise um, I think it was 9D in our um, year 10 textbook, but I've also um, grabbed some questions from the year 11 textbook as well. So um, questions four and six are from the year 11 textbook. And notice that the year 10 um, questions don't really ask you to, um, or they don't really word it in such a way where you have to write a report. I encourage you for questions part D for both questions three and five, Try to answer it as how I've kind of covered it through the, um, through the lesson. So talk about it in terms of the shape, the center, the spread, as well as the outliers. This is the end of today's video. Hopefully this video helped you out. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye.